Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me. My name is Lise Perigo. I am with STR. Really excited to speak with you guys today. We're going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Lise. I've been with STR for the last six years. I am originally from Iowa, graduated from the University of Iowa, worked for IHG. IHG, if you're not familiar, is the parent company to Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Express, um, that portfolio of hotels. Came to STR after being in the hotel industry for a couple years and based in Nashville now. I really work closely with B&Bs, inns, alternative accommodations, so that being short-term rentals as well, vacation rentals, resorts, hostels, any sort of competition to the hotel industry. That is really my specialty, and that is what I love to do. With that, the agenda for today, I'm just going to talk about who STR is, the very basics of who we are as a company revenue management, and then some performance data, and then we'll have time at the end for some questions. If you are not familiar with STR as a company, we have been around for around 40 years now. We are the leading data analytics and benchmarking company in the hotel industry. While I do say hotel industry, a lot of different entities use our data as well, including several hundred B&Bs and inns. The reason our company was founded was to fit the need of better data in the lodging industry. So since the 80s, we've really been the gold standard for data analytics and benchmarking in the industry. We see ourselves as a thinking partner for the industry. We created industry consistency, the standardization of data and definitions. What is so important to us and what has been instrumental to our success is the fact that we protect property data and company data. We never report a single property or a company. We only report data in an aggregated average form. We have very strict guidelines in place that define how performance data is averaged to ensure that properties and companies cannot be isolated. And with that, we collect data from over 70,000 different properties. This slide says hotels, but that really encompasses B&Bs, inns, we actually work with a lot of glamping companies too in Wyoming, Montana. So a wide variety of lodging partners are on our platform. Hundreds of B&Bs and inns do use this data on a daily basis to make pricing decisions. So again, while we have been a hotel focused product for a long time, we have put a large focus on alternative accommodations for the last several years. And again, that's really what I was hired to do. I've been with the company since 2015. I formed a lot of partnerships with several companies, including the Association of Lodging Professionals, to educate members on how to use our free tool and how you can implement it every month. We also have been working with a lot of different companies like ResNexus to build our database. To get more data will make the reports more relevant to everybody. The data that we collect from our properties includes supply, which is how many rooms you have available, demand, which is how many rooms you sell, and then the total revenue from the rooms that you do sell. We then report occupancy ADR and RevPAR in a free monthly report known as the STAR report. However, there is a, when you sign up, if you choose to sign up, it will be called the hotel survey. Again, this is a bad name because it doesn't only apply to hotels. This can be used by anybody. Anyone who submits this data gets access to the competitor occupancy and rate data for your market. The way to look at this is to ask your questions, how is occupancy for properties in your market or submarket trending? Are local properties staying fully occupied? Does this change during season? How are local rates trending? And maybe another way to think about this is, are, are the properties in your market achieving a higher or lower rate than me? It's a very simple and concise report to be able to use and to make strategic decisions around pricing on a monthly basis and a daily basis. And with that, I want to talk to you about the idea of revenue management. Revenue management is the foundation of a successful sales and marketing strategy. This is what the cycle looks like. Really, it's all about the right product to the right customer at the right time, at the right price, in the right place. 
using all of these different decisions to make the best decision for your business. Starting with the first step being in revenue management is to analyze the data to get an understanding of your position against your comp set and your market. When I say comp set, I mean your competitive set, the closest four to eight properties in your area. And these could be vacation rentals. They could be hotels. They could be RVs and tent camping. Anybody in your competitive set or in your area who would report data to us, we will show this in this report and you can use this as a benchmark or a starting point to use moving forward. After taking a look at that data, you can get a good idea of where you're performing well, but you can also identify different areas of opportunity. The next step, once you understand that, is to develop your strategy. Properties have a wide range of opportunities to bring in revenue from offering dining to room services to incorporating different types of guest experiences. But at the end of the day, properties make most of their money on room business. So room business should always be the primary business focus. When it comes down to it, there are two tactics to increase revenue from room business. And that would be on focus on raising occupancy by bringing in more guests or focus on raising rates by charging more for rooms. By monitoring our reports and benchmarking your property's performance against your competition will help you keep up with your competition. It may sound complicated, but again, properties all over the world are applying this practice every day, including several hundred B&Bs and inns that we do work with. Properties can compare their occupancy ADR and RevPAR performance against their local market averages and a comp set of their choice, and then by keeping an eye on your results, you can ensure that you are operating in line with standard levels in your area. So looking at a real example of what benchmarking looks like, if you're anything like me looking at this, you may think manager A is performing better than manager B. However, market conditions play a big factor in understanding property performance. That's why benchmarking is such an essential practice for not only adjusting your pricing strategy to win business over your competitors, but also for understanding how market conditions are affecting your property and the properties around you. Because decline doesn't always mean you're failing. There's something in manager B strategy that is mitigating the losses their competitors are seeing and helping them weather the storm and setting them up for success when market conditions improve your performance needs to be viewed within that context. And I think throughout the course of COVID-19 and the impact of the pandemic that we've seen on the industry, I think we know this better than ever. So wrapping up really the idea of revenue management and how to apply it, this is how it works to get that data. For STR to provide reports on a property's occupancy ADR and RevPAR, we need three pieces of information, which is the number of rooms a property has available, the number of rooms it sells, and then the revenue it generated from those rooms. STR's data comes straight from the property and then is delivered straight back to the property. This means all of our lodging performance metrics and competitor insights are the truest representation of how the game is actually playing out. And because STR always delivers competitor insights in an average form, Individual property data remains 100% secure and confidential at all times. This is what our report looks like. Um, this is very high level. You can see there is occupancy, ADR, and RevPAR. At the very top is a very quick at a glance on a monthly basis. It will show you the absolute values for that month. And then below that, you can see how it's trending over time. You can toggle between occupancy, ADR, and RevPAR. You can remove any of those different metrics if you don't want to see them all at once. If it would help you look at just occupancy, you can remove ADR. If you don't want to look at your own property, you just want to look at your market, you can select those different boxes as well. And if anybody would be interested in sending up an individual walkthrough of the report, you are free to contact me at any point and I can give you a demo of that. But this is another way that the report can be viewed. So looking at this, you can see the property 
in this example is performing at 90% and the market's at 75%. So this is showing occupancy. In the top right-hand corner, you can see occupancy ADR in Rev Park can be viewed. Right now, the toggle is on occupancy. Again, property versus market. And the property is performing better than the market. When it says industry in this report, it's referring to your market. So again, it's, it's your market level, all of the people in your market who have a similar ADR than you. So looking at occupancy, this property is performing better than the market. However, looking at ADR, when you toggle between occupancy and ADR and RevPAR, you can get a different look at the KPIs. You can see this property, while they are performing better in occupancy, they are underperforming when it comes to ADR, meaning that there is a little bit more pricing power the market does have, but they are not utilizing that. So you can look at this and say, oh, okay, maybe I do have more room to adjust my rate than I previously thought. So looking at this, a takeaway from it was maybe I can adjust my rate to meet the demand that is coming into the market. This is another way the report can be viewed. This is how a property um, normally would look at the data and the actions that they would take. Um, so looking at this, the percent change, and I am looking at the first column, which is occupancy over to percent change where the green arrow is. The percent change across the board is green. It is meaning it is improving year over year. However, you can look at different sections of this report and understand, okay, which metric am I performing better in and where do I have room for improvement? So in RevPAR for the current month, this property is taking $36.91 to the bank. RevPAR is essentially how much money you are making per available room, and that property is performing under the market. So RevPAR for the market is $42.99. However, this property is improving 8% year over year, whereas the market is losing 2% share. So while they are underperforming in absolute value, they are starting to get more share of the market than the market is receiving. All of this data can also be exported into Excel if you're interested. I can also show you guys how to do that. There is an export function if you are interested in doing your own analysis. And again, one thing to make very clear, while we do collect all of this data from, I had mentioned 70,000 different properties, we have been successful because we never share any of this data except in an aggregated form. So your data is 100% protected. Again, the reports that I was showing you, this is 100% free of charge. It'll contain 18 months of historical data for occupancy, ADR, and RevPAR, your property versus your market. Not only will it show you your market, but it will show you everyone in your market who has a similar ADR to you, and then in your submarket. So your submarket being the closest area that it could possibly be, and then only people who achieve a similar ADR to you as well. That's the most granular that you can get and extremely actionable data without having to pay for anything. Again, this is 100% free. Using the report, you can be able to answer questions like, am I performing below or above my market? Did I overprice or underprice my rooms last month? And again, the report is comparing your property versus your market, so you can really take action and understand your rate strategy. And then if you overprice compared to your market, did your occupancy suffer as a result? The benefits of this, again, is to understand when and if demand is returning. We know that COVID hit our industry very hard. You can also compare how your property is performing compared to the market. So not only can you see your own strategies on an 18-month trend line, but you can also compare that to the market and understand my numbers may not look so good or maybe they look really good, but how does that play into the context of the market? That will help you understand your weak months and your strong months as well. And then if you do have strong months, how can you capitalize on that? How can you adjust your rate strategy? Is there more opportunity to get more occupancy or can I adjust my rate to meet that demand? I had mentioned there is a paid option. That is um, the star report. 
you can choose four to eight competitors in your market. You will receive weekly data on that. So weekly data being day by day, occupancy ADR and rep bar. So if you want to understand how your Monday, your Tuesday compared to your Friday and Saturday, that will show in this report. And that'll also allow you to choose a very granular set of properties that you can benchmark yourself against and understand their occupancy ADR and rep part as well. And then by monitoring these reports, you can obviously make those adjustments that I discussed so that you can improve your own performance. The biggest similarity between these reports is that you can replace the assumptions or facts that you have about your own market and get real actionable data and market the impact of your strategies to get a clear performance picture. And again, the data we collect is the most accurate data in the market. It is confidential, reliable, actionable, and accurate. So now I will get into some performance data. Um, this will include hotel data. This will include B&B and INS data. I will talk about a little bit what's in the pipeline, so what kind of properties are being built right now, and then talk about the forecast. So looking at data since the 90s, again, we have been a company that has been in business for the last 40 years, so we have a lot of data. So looking at the last three recessions and then COVID, you can see that our industry was hit extremely hard, almost three times as significant as the last three recessions. But you can see for the industry, each recession got a little bit worse, which is really interesting to note. And then when the pandemic hit in March of 2020, our rates and occupancy were hit the hardest that they had ever been. And then as of around July this year, we started to see positive ADR percent change and positive occupancy percent change as well. And percent change, I think I may have mentioned this, this is year over year percent change. So it's comparing how we were performing the same time last year to understand if we are starting to perform better. And as you can see over the course of the last couple of months, we have been. U.S. hotel performance strengthened in September with all indexes except ADR increasing month over month. The index is this year compared to the most recent comparable year, which is 2019. So when we're looking at this, we're really taking 2020 out of the equation because 2019 was a very, very strong year for the industry. So we wanted to look at what the most comparable time frame was for this. And as you can see, July um, was a very, very strong month. But we have, since December, we have slowly been creeping up and performing better. August and September started to slow down a little, still selling six out of 10 rooms. But with August and September, we do expect um, the industry to slow down a little. That is when kids go back to school, leisure season really starts to end. Conference season has been underway. The cool thing about September is that group demand reached its highest pandemic era level with over 4.8 million room nights sold in September, which is amazing for our industry. So while conferences have been back in some capacity, we also surveyed guests to see if they were traveling or if they weren't. And if they weren't, why were they not? As you can see from this, the biggest reason people have not been traveling is because of legislation or restrictions. There's a lot of confusion around travel, a lot of inconsistency between states, which I think leads to the second highest reason people aren't traveling, which is really a hassle of quarantine. Um, and that can change state by state. The list goes on, but it's really centered around people's comfort level. People really haven't been comfortable traveling. However, the great thing about November of this year is that international travel restriction was lifted. And I expect we will start to see consumer confidence start to bounce back with that international travel pickup. I hope everything until this point has helped you understand who STR is. On this slide, this is total B&Bs and ins that we collect data for 
in the US. This is based on September 2021. You can see that occupancy is around 68%, ADR around 265. And then Revpar again, which is essentially how much money you make per available room is 179. You can see the percent change, which I mentioned again, is comparing September 21 to September 2020. Obviously, September 2020, we were still in really the thick of the pandemic. So for 2021, you can see these percent change levels very high and people are traveling a lot more this year. Compared to hotels, B&B, B&Bs and inns are performing better across the board. The average for a hotel right now is charging around 133 for a room and are only about 60% occupied where occupancy for bed and breakfast and inns are a little higher, maybe closer to the 70% mark as they saw around 68% as a total for September. While historical data isn't really the most relevant on a trend line anymore, and I say this because obviously COVID decimated our industry, it's still really interesting to know over the course of the last 11 years what the industry looked like. This industry, and again, this is specific to B&Bs and inns. This is all the B&Bs and inns that participate with us across the U.S. The industry has performed strongest in the summer, with the peak always being in July and then the worst month being January. Interesting, but not uncommon. I think we see this very much so in the hotel industry as well. People travel less during the winter. I think my biggest takeaway from this, though, is the winter months had slowly been getting better, and then the strong season was starting to get longer. Hopefully after we make it through the pandemic era, there will be a longer travel season and we will start to see the winter months still get better and then the summer months stay a little bit longer like they had been. The previous high peak was 77% occupied and that's, again, total U.S. So there's certain markets that do perform a little better, some markets that perform a little worse, but as a whole, 77% occupied this year is great. The previous peak, or sorry, that was 77 was the previous peak. 75% just happened, which almost reached that previous peak. We know daily data is so important. And again, daily data is each day of the week on a whole and how each day performs. During the pandemic, it was very fluid, constantly changing. This is the daily data from March through September of 2021. At the very beginning of March, you can see the industry was performing relatively normal. And then COVID hit within mid-March to mid-April being the worst but occupancy started increasing on a daily basis. Again, more so you can see those spikes. That's the weekend. Obviously people started traveling a little bit on the weekends and then performance starting to get better. You can see just a general incline while some day of the week did drag daily occupancy. Generally things are on the up and up as far as traveling is concerned. So doing very well. In August, you can see that some days we're reaching 90%. And I'm going to break it out a little further, but I'm going to say those are Fridays and Saturdays. People taking Thursday to Sunday, long weekends to drive to markets. All of that being said, you may be wondering what this means for you and what is the number that you should be comparing yourself to. On an average, this is how a bed and breakfast or an inn is performing. If you're performing at these levels, you're on par with those in your industry. If you're performing below, you have a little bit of room for improvement. If you're performing above, you're getting your fair share of the market. So July, August, and September have been the best months for our industry since March, 2020. When looking at hotel performance in context with bed and breakfast and inns, B&Bs and inns are performing slightly better in regards to occupancy but they absolutely have had more pricing power than hotels have seen. Hotels, especially in urban markets, they were hit very hard during the pandemic. If you were a hotel in Chicago, New York, San Francisco, you are still recovering absolutely from that. The biggest question during the pandemic that we have seen is because of the state of the industry, 
do we drop our rate to put heads in beds? Dropping rate is not a demand driver. The reason people aren't traveling was a pandemic, not because rates are high. So during the pandemic, if you maintain rate, when demand comes back, you will have a higher rev par coming out of the pandemic. Looking at this on a daily basis, like I mentioned, daily data has been super important over the course of the last 20 months. This is comparing July 2021 to September 2021. The reason that I chose these two months was because July was one of our best months that we have seen for the industry. And then September is our most recently processed month. Thursday to Saturday, obviously the best days for travel, but I wanted to showcase how strong ADR was in July for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, hopefully signaling for 2022 that the industry is ready to travel again. There is that comfort level. There will be consumer confidence. While groups likely aren't, and by when I say groups, groups for conferences, conference travel, things like that, while they like, likely aren't staying at B&Bs and inns, the reoccurring theme that we have seen is a leisure trip, a mix of a business and leisure trip. This is going on a work trip, bringing your family, and then extending it to somewhere you can drive to, you can be outdoors, you can hike, and you can feel comfortable. Hopefully, we will continue to see that as it was phenomenal performance across the board for drive to markets over the course of the last 18 to 20 months. September, as you can see, also a great month, but ADR was a little lower. And again, I expect that because of kids going back to school and then the leisure season ending as well. Breaking this out by occupancy on a daily basis, Monday, unsurprisingly, has been the worst day of occupancy for B&Bs and Ns. However, Tuesday to Sunday, as I mentioned, the normal occupancy for a B&B and Inn has been outpacing the hotel average in general, which is great. So the hotel average was around 61%. Tuesday to Sunday is right around that mark, if not higher. So Friday and Saturday was around 80 to 86% occupied. And this is again for the month of September, the averages that we saw. Generally speaking to the industry, we have seen more people interested in drive to markets where they can be outdoors, which a lot of B&Bs and inns are located in these desirable locations. So it's unsurprising that they are performing slightly better than hotels. With that being said, you can see occupancy in Arizona, Colorado, and California are achieving the highest occupancy statewide. These are the states where you can get beautiful weather, you can socially distance, and you can be outside and feel somewhat safe during the pandemic. Some of the other states that I included in this are Virginia, Pennsylvania, Oregon is included, and then Massachusetts as well. We have a large number of par participants in these different markets, so I was able to showcase the performance of these states. For ADR, you may notice the ADR for Massachusetts. This is primarily being driven by the Cape Cod area. So you can see this is around $450 um, a month that they are achieving in ADR. The 313 in California also primarily being driven by coastal areas. It's so important to understand your market and what you can price because as a whole, there's quite a variance based on location. The free report that we have available will show you your property occupancy and ADR versus your local area so that you can make sure you're pricing in relation to that. It's very unlikely a bed and breakfast in Ohio would be pricing similar to a property in Cape Cod. So again, very important for you to understand your market and the context within that. As we look into the forecast for the lodging industry, I just asked B&Bs and Inns to continue to focus on their unique selling points compared to hotels which in general has been like the culture and the vibe at an inn and a b, &B. For instances, the B&B is a historic property and has a unique quality about the building or the property. Guests are paying more for that experience and being able to socially distance and be around hiking. So it's very important to understand why you may have a little more pricing power at your property. 
in the future and in 2022, I imagine B&Bs and inns around leisure, beach, mountain locations may do better than your typical hotel because of that intimacy, less people, and the general culture. Currently, actual recorded demand, so again, that's your room sold, outpaced our forecast, which is great for us. So we predicted it a little lower. We thought we would perform um, at 34%. The industry did better and performed at 43%. And this is year over year percent change again. And we thought demand would be a 98% increase. It was 106% increase. With transient demand going to several destinations over the past several weeks, actual demand was only down by 12%. We don't expect a full recovery until really 2023 for the total US. However, a lot of different properties are already already back to their 2019 levels. And when I say 2019 levels, I compare it to that because again, how I said the industry was so strong in 2019. We will see a gradual recovery with Revpar increasing to around $75 by the end of 2022 and around 62% on average occupancy. And then ADR is projecting to see around $122 on a nightly basis. So this is comparing occupancy ADR and Revpar, comparing the top 25 markets to the rest of the US. As I had mentioned, the top 25 markets, urban markets like Chicago, New York, et cetera, were hit extremely hard. Drive to markets, small town America, highway hotels, smaller properties that may have some very unique selling point did a lot better than the top 25 markets. So we are forecasting them to also continue to have a little bit more pricing power. We do expect um, occupancy and demand to come back to the top 25 markets, especially with the international travel ban lifted. We collect profit and loss data from thousands of hotels in the U.S. This has been a huge topic of discussion for the last several years. What I wanted to showcase here really is labor costs. So in 2019, labor costs were around $71. Right now, labor costs are around $35. EBITDA, which is your bottom line, what you take to the bank. In 2019, EBITDA was around $58. Right now, it's around $16. We are seeing small improvements, but we still have a long way to go as we navigate through the pandemic. So labor costs low, likely because of the loss to jobs that are all still open. You can see that for our industry, there's still 334,000 accommodation jobs still missing from 2019. More hotels and different properties are opening again, which is great. But with the opening of all of these different lodging properties comes more jobs. And these jobs are not being filled. We continue to see a rise in open accommodation jobs, which is what the green line represents. The orange line represents the number of closed hotels. And you can see the number of closed hotels getting smaller, meaning they're reopening but the jobs aren't being filled. And with that, there are so many positions opening. You can see that accommodation wages continue to climb when thinking about this. So the hourly wage has risen significantly over the course of the last 18 months, more so than it ever has. And this is going back to January, 2008. Looking at this again, just in a different sort of way, accommodation wages are up $2 an hour over the past six months. So the people that are getting hired, they are earning record for accommodation wages. They're earning more so than they ever have 
before that we have on record for profit and loss data in the accommodations industry. Some key takeaways, um, again, your data will be kept 100% confidential. We have been so successful because of this. There are hundreds of B&Bs and Ns who use this free report to understand how they're performing relative to their market and so that they can identify different areas of opportunity. The great thing about this report as well is it's simple and concise and the truest picture of demand. All the data comes directly from your property management system. And then as far as performance data, consumer confidence con continues to climb and international borders are now open, signaling, hopefully signaling for a good 2022. Now, if you are interested in getting started with STR, the way to get started is to simply go into your ResNexus settings and click on STR reports. Here you will find more information about the program and you will need to select one of the two available options. So it will allow you to send an enrollment email directly to us and then a representative will reach out to you or you can enroll online. We will still reach out to you. The formats are just a little different. It's important to note that ResNexus will then start sharing your historical data and current data on a nightly basis. If for any reason you want to discontinue participating with us, you can always disable sharing your data with us. So once you enroll, we um, as a company, you will have a representative who will email you your STR number. You will plug in your STR number and then enable STR. Here is what our login screen looks like. As soon as you enable STR, a representative will reach out to you with the enrollment form or confirm your enrollment. This will generally take 72 hours to get through that with your rep. And then it will take maybe three to five business days to go through the process to get your property set up, get a username and password emailed to you. Once you get a username emailed to you, you go to clients.str.com, you'll plug in your username, you'll create a password, and then you'll be able to log in. Upon logging in, you won't need to enter your data into the data portal. We will get that directly from ResNexus. DSTAR is where, which is the button to the left under that, DSTAR is where you will be able to view your reports. It's very important to note that around the 17th of every month is when we process data. We will process data. So if you enroll on the 10th, you will get an email when your report is ready to view in the system, which will likely be somewhere between the 18th to the 20th of every month. Once you get that email, you will be able to go in and view your report. What I'm going to currently work on internally with the team is let's say you enroll on the 25th and you just missed that previous report delivery. I'm going to work on the team just automatically resending that report for you so that when you do get your username, you can log in and view that report anyway, even though you just slightly missed that deadline. Here is where DSTAR is. It is highlighted. That is where you go in. Your reports will be able to view again if you sign up today and you don't have a report to view right away, that's not uncommon. Um, give it a couple weeks again. Usually it'll be around the 17th of the month. Again, you'll get a email notifying you that your report is ready. However, again, I do want to update that process internally so we can get you guys a report sooner than we have been previously. So you can click on the report. It will say monthly DSTAR survey, and then you'll be able to go navigate the report. There's a lot of different ways that you can walk through it. On the left-hand side, you can look at the charts view. You can look at a table view, the response data. Um, that is specific to the star report. If you do have competitors, it'll show you all your competitors that are reporting. If you do receive the market level report and you want to see who is included in your market level report, feel free to email us that information and we can email that to you. Our general um, inbox is info at scr.com if you have any additional questions around that. 
If you have any broad questions, feel free to type them into the chat and I can answer. In a couple minutes, I'm going to pass it back over to Nate right now. Awesome. Thanks, Elise. Uh, I'll have you click through these couple slides with me really quick as we kind of wrap up. But of course, uh, if you like this webinar and want to see past webinars, you can find them at resnexus.com under education and webinars. That's where this one will be posted. And then uh, this will bring up all of our upcoming and past webinars where you will see over 50 different webinars as a free resource to you. And then, of course, we also have the timestamps available underneath each of the webinars. We had a lot of technical information in this webinar. Um, so if there's specific things that you want to go back and review, you can easily do that by checking out the timestamps below the video. And if you're a ResNexus customer and have questions, feel free to reach out to your support team by clicking on support there in your back office. From there, you can either call your red carpet professional directly or call the general support line. Thank you, Elise, for, for sharing all this. I love the SCR report, and I can't express enough just how truly SCR is the gold standard for data in the hospitality industry. And one of the things that I just want to make sure that we reiterate to our people that are on the call with us is that, of course, it's always confidential, like she said. So your, your rates and your information isn't going to be handed to your neighbor right? Or your competition. So that's, I want to make sure that that's abundantly clear. It's, it's ranked. So your position on the report and uh, Lisa will be able to kind of uh, touch on this more, but you'll get a ranking of one through eight for the paid report, I want to say, and then you'll just get a market index for the free report, but it's free and it's always confidential, which is a huge plus. I mean, I always use star data. If you joined us for any of our past webinars, I use a lot of different star data and reports and findings. I just used one on a social media marketing webinar that I did back in August because how goes the hotel industry goes the B&B industry. So like she was saying about international borders being opened and travel coming back and group travel coming back, um, certainly that's going to affect the B&B industry in the ends as people try to use leisure travel and things like that. So Lise, if you can clarify, I just want to make sure that I stated that correctly so it's always confidential, but the, the ranking that I've seen that I was familiar with when I would always use it at the hotel, that's the paid version, right? But then we would get a market index for the free version. Yes. So ranking is available if you choose to go with the paid report that will show you your rank among your competition. So let's say you have four properties in your comp set. You will see a rank one out of five. You are included in that. So it will show you maybe you're performing third out of five, so that being the four and then you. For the free report, you do not have ranking, but you still do get the index. The index is showing you if you are achieving your fair share of the market. So the index number will be either above 100 or below 100. Below 100 means you're getting your, it means you have room for improvement. If it's above 100, it means that you have achieved your fair share of the market. The higher above 100 means better below 100. Obviously, again, room for improvement. Awesome. Thanks for clarifying that. And again, feel free to put your questions in the chat if anybody has any questions, uh, and we'll be sure to go over those. One of the things that I thought was really great that you kind of reviewed was, of course, the labor statistics. That was uh, pretty fascinating, just how much $2 more an hour people are getting paid now because of the, the labor shortages. So again, START has a lot of uh, really great information. And what I would encourage our listeners to do is, um, I know that in very competitive markets, take uh, St. Augustine, Florida, I know that we have a lot of properties, B&Bs, that will use the STAR report and the data that they have available so that they can have an idea of how they're ranking against their comp set, and they'll actually pay for that, uh, that paid version of the report. So, and what I would encourage you to do is talk to your competition about it, talk to the different associations uh, that you're a part of, your local and state uh, associations, ALP and things like that, to try to encourage others to use the STAR report, because of course, you, they would need to be submitting their information if you wanted to see how you're ranking against a specific competition or something like that, right? It would be an aggregate of five or eight properties, I think you said, right, is the max. But if you want to see how you're ranking in your, your neighborhood and get that, that ranking for the paid report, of course, those individuals would need to also be submitting their ADR, REVPAR, 
an occupancy to star. Yeah, and I will, there are certain areas that have been doing very well over the course of the last 18 to 20, mon- 20 months. I would say St. Augustine is a great example. Cape Cod is a great example. Sedona is a great example. The more visibility we have into performance, the better we as an industry can perform and the, the more pricing power you would be able to have. Um, so again, real visibility into performance and sharing data is very important for the industry. Um, and again, we won't report your individual property data. You are the only, your property is the only property that will see your individual data. Yeah. And so can you tell me, uh, as far as forecast goes for, for people that are on the call today, are, are you seeing any particular trends or threats out there, whether it's the vacation rental market to the B&B industry or uh, even um, Facebook, the, the metaverse <laughs> and people not traveling. People are always going to travel, but I think that's really yeah. interesting that people are kind of escaping in their homes these days. Yeah. I mean, I think we saw the industry start to perform so well as consumer confidence came back with the vaccine um, in April and May. Unfortunately, you know, July, August, September, it's normal for the leisure season to end as people go back to school. So that was really, I mean, the, the biggest threat was just normality after we had started seeing performance start to pick up again. I do think the international travel ban being lifted will be amazing for our year next year. And I do think conferences are going to come back. I do think we'll continue to see that trend of people extending their work trips and mixing it with family. I will tell you guys, I just got back from another conference and you guys may actually be familiar with this brand because they're in smaller towns where you would maybe find a bed and breakfast. They're called Cobblestone. They're very heavy in Wisconsin, Nebraska, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, they specifically had their conference in Orlando so that the families could stay in Orlando and take their kids to Disney. So I let my expectation is that we will see a lot of that in 2022. I will also tell you in 20, I'm getting my years confused in 2020, we were doing a lot of research around short-term rentals, vacation rentals, I helped launch a pilot in Nashville, Miami, Philadelphia, London, some different urban markets to understand the impact of short-term rentals. We consistently saw short-term rentals perform better than hotels, specifically short-term rentals that had two bedrooms or more and two bedrooms or more in destination locations. So while I say Miami, maybe 45 minutes outside of Miami where a family could rent a six bedroom house on the beach that those are the kinds of places that people wanted to stay. So and so I, when you're saying short-term rental, you're saying not hosted, right? So there wouldn't be a, a staff member or management on property. Is that what you're saying? I just want to make so a there's, distinction. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things happening in the vacation rental, short-term rental industry, but I think the biggest transition for, the hospitality industry in general was to do a hands-free or a, how do I say a hands-free check-in. So you didn't have to come in contact with anybody. So there wasn't anybody on site. There wasn't a lobby that you had to check into. You could just go to that house, get a key that was in a lockbox, check in, and then have Wi-Fi and smart technology to get you through your vacation. Yeah. Great. So, um, no, that's, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Thanks for clarifying that. And of course, I mean, I think, um, kind of while the hygiene theater may have played itself out, I think certainly having those, that contactless check-in, um, contact, that's the word I was looking yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. we'll continue to be a trend going forward. We did have a question come in from Chuck. Thanks for submitting your question. And I'll submit this to you, Lise. Does the report take into account any blocked out or unopened rooms at the property on the comp set. I would, so by this, I think it's meaning maybe a room under maintenance and how does that affect your occupancy? So if you had five rooms, you took one out of order and it was just four rooms. I'm, I'm taking that as that, that's what the question is. My response to that is we don't take rooms out of order or out of market data unless it is out of commission for six months or more. So if you fluctuate your own room supply, you can report it like that on your report. 
and you can see that reflected. If someone in your comp set only has four rooms available for maybe the week, but normally they have five, you will see occupancy and ADR based on those five rooms, not the four they are reporting. If there has been a natural disaster or some specific reason there is a room offline or blocked for an extended period of time, we will take that into account. In the comp set, you can see on the response tab how many rooms are being reported. So if it says your comp set is 70% occupied, you can go to the response report and see exactly how many rooms are being included in that. I hope that answered your question. And if not, I'm you, I can give you guys my email and we can maybe set up a call and discuss that a little more. Yeah, I think I, I didn't see anything else come in from Chuck. So if that if that doesn't answer your question, Chuck, feel free to um, submit a follow up question and we'll, and we'll go through that. We did another survey that unfortunately I didn't include in this presentation. The survey was what type of property are you more likely to stay in? The highest was a boutique hotel, a bed and breakfast in or a vacation rental. The worst um, or the, the least common option that people wanted to stay in over the course of the last couple months, a hotel or a hostel. Nate, I'll have to share that slide with you so that you can maybe follow up with people because I'm now regretting not including that in the presentation. Yeah, well, I was going to include your uh, information and maybe I can include that in oh, the great. follow up email with the video. Feel free again to submit any questions that you might have. I think we're getting towards the end of the hour here, so we'll probably give it another minute or two. But again, we'll have this uh, full recording available online uh, under uh, resnexus.com under education and then webinars. And that'll be likely by the end of this week, um, by the end of the day on Friday, you either receive that email or you can, of course, go to resnexus.com and then click on education and then webinars. Uh, I'll give it another minute, see if we have any other questions, but how long has SCR been collecting data on B&Bs, I suppose? Because you've been in I hotels, think, I think, 30 years, right? Yeah, almost 40 years. So in yeah. ho hotels, that's really how we started. That's been our bread and butter. We have never put a huge emphasis on bed and breakfast really until recently, I would say 2018 or 2019. So we're really starting to pour, put more of an emphasis on bed and breakfast and inns. I think, you know, especially with COVID, we did see them perform better than hotels. And it's been such an important part of the industry that we have been missing. So I hope we can scale this. I hope we can, anybody who's on the call, if you're interested in participating, please reach out, please enroll through the different ways that I walked through, but it's such an important part of the industry and I hope we continue to see it grow. Now, are you ever going to get into to camping, you think? Because I think alternative accommodations certainly outperformed uh, hotels this last year. And, you know, of course, with STR collecting data on inns and BB, I think you even said glamping, but you're yeah. not doing sites, right? Like, you know, KOAs and stuff like that at this point. Any consideration for that? There's definitely consideration uh, back in 2016, 2017, we did some research on that. Unfortunately, there's just not enough variety right now on different companies who own these campsites. So if we were to build a similar competitive set, the important thing about a comp set is you have to have four different properties. You have to have at least two companies in your comp set. There's not a different, there's not enough variety of people who own campsites like KOI, KOA is one of the biggest. There's not a whole lot of other variety besides them. So it would be really hard to build comp sets and have the same idea of a star report with camping. We're still trying to figure out how we can collect that data and it is still important to us. We just have yet to really figure out how to address that industry. Gotcha. Oh, that totally makes sense. Yeah, because it's really important, of course, to keep it confidential and so that your, your competitors aren't seeing what your rates are and things like that. So, yep. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. So, uh, Lise, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, again, we will follow up with that video here in just a couple of days. Thank you so much. And I'll reach out to you, Lisa, about those, that other survey. Uh, I'd love to learn more. That sounds fascinating. But um, happy Wednesday. Thanks again. Appreciate you joining us. And take care. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.